<laughs> Mr. T's new game is totally gonna show off my epic Jedi skills. High score? I am your father. Luke, trust me. Obi Wan has taught you well. Video sensing is a fun little feature you can add to your Scratch games, but using your body as a controller isn't always a smart play. <laughs> Putting yourself into the game is an idea that video gamers have always fantasized about. Immersive technologies like virtual reality and its cousin, augmented reality, are bringing that dream a lot closer. While we wait around for our future in the metaverse, there are some cool ways you can experiment with immersive technology using good old Scratch. Video sensing is a Scratch add-on that lets you use your computer's webcam and your own body as a game controller. It's not part of Scratch's regular block set, but you can load it by clicking the extensions menu at the bottom left of your coding screen. Click on video sensing to load four new green blocks that you can use in your Scratch projects. You'll need a webcam and your web browser might ask you for permission to use it before you get started. If everything is working properly, your Scratch stage should be filled with a live video feed from your webcam. The image is transparent and if you've loaded a backdrop, you should be able to see it in the background. You can change the transparency with this block. Zero removes the transparency, making your video cover up the backdrop. 100 makes the video completely invisible. Scratch's video sensing feature works by looking at the video layer underneath the sprite you're coding and monitoring to see whether the pixels underneath it have changed. When Scratch detects that the pixels have changed enough, it can trigger an action in your Scratch project. In this simple bouncing game, the spiders are falling from the top of the screen. Their downward speed keeps accelerating a little at a time. But when Scratch detects motion under the sprite, they get a little boost of speed that bounces them upwards. You can get a little more control over your sprite's movement using this block. In addition to detecting motion, it includes an option that tries to detect what direction the movement is coming from. It's not perfect, but if I code my hippo so it's pointing in the same direction as the video motion, I can get a little more control of the way my sprite is moving across the screen. Scratch users have come up with all kinds of inventive ways to use this technology, from herding cats and dogs to a Star Wars game with head movements. Arush, one of our summer co-op students, designed this fun little quiz show project where you pick answers to multiple choice questions by moving your arms to the left and right edges of the screen. Motion sensing turns out to be a fun toy to experiment with, and if you want to see our best try at getting it working properly, check out our Fruit Ninja game. To be honest, a lot of motion sensing projects feel a little too clunky to have much replay value. Unlike more sophisticated technologies like the Xbox Kinect controller, Scratch's video sensing can't tell which part of your body it's looking at, making it a little too easy to accidentally trigger events. The makers of Scratch are working on it, however, and they've already offered a sneak preview of what motion sensing might look like in future versions of Scratch. Surf over to the Scratch Lab website to experiment with powerful new face sensing blocks that can detect facial features like eyes and noses and use that data to control your sprites. You can use these blocks to glue sprites onto your virtual face. The software was trained using machine learning algorithms and it's smart enough to change the size and tilt of your sprites to match your head as it moves around in the camera frame. It's not exactly VR, but if you love Scratch, this is the coolest way yet to put yourself into the game. I feel the liftoff. The clock has started. Roger. The force is strong for this one. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Ugh.